So I want to show you just, uh, just real quickly, just some points about Mordecai the watchman. I know it's almost noon. I'm not going to take forever, but I just think it's really important because there's a call to watchmen today. So as a watchman, Mordecai was stationed at the gate as a spiritual father um, among the Jews, but also as a government official. And he ended up, you know, as a spiritual father, he raised his orphaned cousin, Esther. And uh, the Hebraic writings, the, the rabbis all, all say, and this is just tradition, but they say that he actually spent a lot of time teaching the children because he knew that if he could instill the word of God in their lives, that they wouldn't come under that Babylonian spirit. Parents, this is, this is our mandate, to instill the word of God in the hearts and lives of our children so that they don't come under the Babylonian spirit that's all around us. And so what, the question that I want to ask you is, where is your gate? You have a gate that you're supposed to be watching. Where is your gate? Is it in the community? It is, is it in business? Is it over your family? It says of the, the virtuous woman in Proverbs chapter 31, it says she watches over the ways of her household. That word is watchman. She's a watchman for her household. We, where are we watching? Are we watching what's taking place around us? So I want you to know, what are you watching over? Who are you watching over? We should all be watching both in the natural and in the spirit. There's a challenge of that that God is bringing forth. And, you know, if Mordecai was a spiritual father and he was teaching it to his children, did it bless you that Izzy came up and prophesied today? Does it bless you that our children get up and, 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 uh, and share? I want to read a testimony that, uh, about uh, uh, Ivana Pierce, uh, Eric, and Eva, wave your hand, their daughter. Uh, Grandma Christie took her to a farmer's market yesterday morning. I want to just read you this testimony. It says that Ivana went to the farmer's market with her. She noticed one of the vendors had a hurt finger. Ivana's how old? She's six. So she told the man to give him her hand, give, give her his hand, because she had to pray for him. So she took hold of his hand and prayed, commanding healing in the name of Jesus. She said there were lots of people that were around that were listening. So when, then they went to the next tent, and when they were friends, and when she told them what had happened, she told them, Ivana told them, um, I'm the healing girl. And when, somebody, when I see somebody that's blind or can't walk, I'll pray for them, and they're going to be healed. Come on, this is the generation we're raising. Come on. Their, their identity is being anchored in who God says they are. Not who the world says they are, but who God says they are. Amen? So uh, we need spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers. Lift your hands if you want to be a spiritual father, a spiritual mother. Father, I thank you, God, that you're raising people up, Father God, that are, going to, that are going to pour into generations. They're going to pour into, Lord, not just their own kids, but to generation after generation. I'm thankful for Bishop God, who still has a heart to see generations blessed, Father God. Lord, even though he's, he's up in years, God, he wants to see the generations blessed. So we thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in our children. But let us be those that watch as spiritual moms and spiritual dads over what's taking place in the land and that we take parental responsibility in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, as a watchman, Mordecai uh, helped Esther, the Esther church, get in the right place. As I said, she got in place not even knowing that there was going to be this horrific thing that was going to happen. The word for watchman in the Hebrew is the word shamar. And a Shamar prophet releases a prophetic plan and positions believers for destiny. Why am I saying this? Well, we're a prophetic house. And when we prophesy to people, when we minister to people, we have to understand that prophetic word is a key that has an ability to unlock people's lives. But not only is it the prophetic word, it's you obeying what God says to you. What has God said to you? Because it's not just a matter of your own obedience. Because inside of you is somebody else's destiny. When you obey God, it unlocks others 
so they can obey God and so that they can do what God's called them to do. And in their obedience, God unlocks the destinies of others. Come on, we want to see an awakening. We want to see something begin to catch fire. Then we've got to step up and say, God, I need to get busy. I need to get on about my father's business. I need to obey. And that prophetic word unlocks. So we might need to go back and look at what the word has said over us. And are we aligning with what the word has said? Are we agreeing? Are we doing what the word has said? I mean, the, the, I think the shining testimony in this place, in this whole ministry that, that we're sitting in right now, is the story of the woman that went through Boswell, Oklahoma back in the 50s. We don't even know her name. She obeyed God. She went and she preached a brush arbor meeting because she went and set up a whole little area out in the woods to preach the gospel to this town because the churches wouldn't let her in because she's a woman. Who's afraid of a woman? My, my husband raised his hand. I'm so glad. <laughs> But she did what God said and probably only saw a handful of souls come in the kingdom. But one of those souls was our very own Bishop Hammond. Come on, who's changed the world for many, many people. Inside of him was my destiny. Inside of him was my husband's destiny, our children, our grandchildren, all of our. Come on, how many people's lives have been touched and affected by that life, Bishop Hammond's life? Guess who gets the crown? The woman that obeyed God. Inside of you is somebody else's destiny. Number three, as a watchman, Mordecai overheard and exposed the enemy's plan. He was sitting by the gate where he was appointed, and he overheard two of the king's chambermen that attended to the king plotting his assassination. So he went, he shared it with Esther, Esther shared it with the king, the plot was thwarted, and those two would-be assassins were taken out. I'm telling you what, we need to understand that God wants to bring us all up to a higher level of spiritual discernment, both to discern what God wants to do, but also to discern what the devil wants to do. And when we start doing that with a greater effectiveness, then we get off the defense and we get on the offense. 